Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So about three something years ago, I was trying to invest in the stock market. I've read so many amazing books. I've got the, by the way, some of the books that I've got, um, I've read is on the link um, in the description basically section. Okay, there's no affiliation, nothing is just there to help you guys if you're interested. Okay, so I've read so many books. I went in a position, I was in a position where I wanted to start, but I didn't know where to go about. So I, how to go about it. I went online, I went on YouTube, I went everywhere else. People talk about stock markets and basically, but there was no one out there that was talking about Sharia compliant companies. There was a lot of controversial things. There was people saying, this is halal, this is haram. So I just wanted to learn about this thing. Luckily, I came across Zoya, basically an app. I thought, okay, this is a good start. Then I started learning about different stocks and then how to analyze it. And then I've came across basically the, the Sharia compliant board. And I've learned about them and what they do and how they could the criteria they use and so on. If you're interested in some of these things, by the way, I'm talking about here, I put a lot of time into this Sharia compliant investing ebook. So that is accessible on the um on your Patreon account. On, okay. So if you're really interested in that, have a look at that. I genuinely if I put a lot of effort and time into that because I thought, you know what, it might actually be helpful. And obviously you get a lot of the other spreadsheets and so on. So let's go back to this. Um, so I was in a position where I wanted to start, but there was no one out there just to show exactly what should be done and so on. So that I, that day I made the decision, there's nobody out there. I'm going to share my journey and I'm going to share what I've learned so far. And this is what I've been doing for now, almost three years. Okay, almost three years. Yeah, there's about 3000 of you guys. So thank you so much. I really genuinely appreciate that. One of the things that I just ask you guys to do all the time is to like the videos. And the reason I do that is not just because obviously it makes me happy and so on, right? But at the same time, I want these videos to reach as many people as possible. Because if we can stay at all, there are so many brothers and sisters out there trying to invest in the stock market, trying to find halal stocks and the things that we're doing here that need to know about this channel, inshallah. So let's help them. Let's just reach out as much as we can. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have a to your own channel, just basically give me a shout out. Okay, let me basically let your, you know, basically subscribers know about this, inshallah. So I then came up with the idea of I'm going to share my journey and I'm going to share everything I'm doing in the stock market and this is what I've been doing for the last three years now last video I talked about if you're starting a new um, basically portfolio what you should be doing from stock side of things today I want to share with you guys from ETF side of, because some of you would like to have a ETFs okay instead of having individual stocks and there are huge risks when it comes to buying individual stocks. For example, 3M is one of the companies that are owning the, this portfolio. There is basically a legal situation going on with this company. And for that reason, I'm, I'm down basically over a thousand pounds. I could lose that money easily. Okay, it can happen. Another one is J&J. J&J, there's a legal situation going on, but I am up about 12% or so on. Okay, so it can happen. So you have to be careful. So some of you might be thinking there, sitting there thinking, you know what? I really don't want to learn about what Cummins does. I don't want to learn what Home Depot does, okay? I don't want to know about how many drugs basically comes up every single year in the pipeline. Don't have that time. So instead of doing that, it's better than to invest in ETF. So for example, in this ETF, there's about 200 different companies within that ETF. And the weightings, okay, might be like 2% of that ETF might be, for example, Home Depot. Okay, and something happens to Home Depot, you're just basically losing about 2% and the company would be replaced by another company, by the company that actually created. So the iShares or the BlackRock will then do that job for you and you just pay them a little bit. Okay, and that's how it works. So ETFs are basically a great way of investing if you are, especially if you are new to the market. It's a safer way of doing it, okay, until you learn about these things. So what I want to do today is I want to share with you eight different ETFs okay that you could potentially add to your portfolio last video we talked about having 60 percent of in stocks 40 percent in etfs you could do the other way around you could have 100 percent etfs if that's what you're interested in. so we're going to look at every single one of these etfs right now in a bit more detail that's the plan inshallah if you haven't liked the video yet if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do it because honestly it takes a lot of time to put these things together 
again and then hopefully you would appreciate the amount of time it takes to do these things so just give it the video a like inshallah thank you so the first etf is iShares usa islamic okay or isus this is trading in the uk you can buy it in trading 212 it has expense ratio so this is what you will pay okay of 0 0.3 percent um, a year to date it has a total basically a return okay capital returns of 11.58 which is quite nice okay the overall market i think is up about 16 percent right now so that's not bad at all so about 12 percent up a year to date so since the beginning of the year up until now is up that much the top holdings for these ETFs are Microsoft, Tesla, Exxon, J&J, &J, Procter & Gamble, Chevron, Merck, Adobe, Salesforce, and Cisco. Really solid businesses, solid companies. I, seriously, this is a very, very good ETF. And the expense ratio is not bad. In comparison to the other ETFs out there, for Islamic, basically, Shriya compliant ones, this is actually not bad. In comparison to, obviously, the Vanguards, which is like 0 0.01, 0 0.02, whatever, then obviously, yes, it is a little bit expensive. Now, the top 10 companies, these top 10 companies make up about 54% of the overall um, ETF. So that's quite a lot. And I think, let's have a look now, Microsoft is about 22% of this ETF. So this ETF, again, we're just looking at it, is exactly the same as the one that I just showed you. So as you can see, 22% is a Microsoft, Tesla is about 7%, and then the rest of them about 4% and so on. So 54% is just this ETF, okay? They do pay some dividends, so 0 0.32 um, that, that yield, which is quite nice, and they pay you, obviously, um, quarterly, I think. Or, no, twice a year, sorry, twice a year. So they pay in May and they pay in November. So that's the first ETF that we're looking at today. The next one is the ISWD, which is the one I own. This is World Islamic. Okay, so this is basically should include companies from around the world. But unfortunately, the top 10 doesn't look like it's any different to this. So when you look at these two ETFs, okay, as you go down, if you want to pause the video, look. The only difference is just these two. And this is why I basically, I used to own this one here, so the ISUS, and I sold it because I realized it was identical. They were both identical. If you want a highly concentrated ETA, basically, portfolio of these companies, then maybe go for it, but I wouldn't, okay? So 36% of these ETAs basically is um, just these th basically 10 companies in comparison to the 54%. So it's slightly lower. But expense ratio is exactly the same. And year to date, it only return about 8%. So this one is outperforming. I think, I don't know how, but it's outperforming this. The, considering the only difference is Novartis maybe is doing really well and whatever. But yeah, so as you can see, these two are very, very similar. Oh, both of them are is basically owned by iShares, which is owned by BlackRock, which is the biggest asset management company in the United States and probably in the world. Okay, so it's a f basically section of that that's based in Ireland. And just to give you a little bit more information in terms of, you can see the expense ratio that I showed you now, it does pay some dividends, it's 1.78, so it's slightly higher, and you can see the company. So 15% is on this one is also Microsoft. Remember the other one was 22%, and this one is 15% is Microsoft. Tesla, about 5%, 2% for J&J, &J, and then it goes down as we go. And then you've got about 36% of this entire ETF is actually basically just these top 10 um, companies. So again, another solid ETF that if you're looking for something to where to you know put your money in, that's like a steady eddy kind of an ETF that's not going to rock the boat, is not going to crash as much as the rest of the market, whatever, then this probably will be a good thing. Okay, the third one is also from iShares. So this is emerging markets. It has expense ratio of 0 0.35. A year to date is actually up 3.83, which is a little bit disappointing. But again, a lot of the countries outside the United States, the stock markets are not, Japan is actually doing all right, but the other countries are not doing as well. And as you can see here, you've got like companies like Samsung, companies that I've never even heard of. Um, Vail is actually similar to Rio Tinto. Um, 
um, al rajhi bank is the you basically in saudi arabia then you've got the samsung so there's two this is non-voting so this is if you own the shares of this um, etf so this is stock basically you get to vote and stuff this one is non-voting so it's slightly different but the same company and then you've got other companies that i haven't he he heard of yet um but yes this makes up about 30, so top 10 make up about 35% of these ETFs, and you pay 0 0.35. So let's me just quickly show you. In terms of dividends, they're actually doing some sort of distribution there, and that's 2.5, which is quite good. It's a lot higher than the other two. So you get about 2.5 in terms of dividends as well as price appreciation. And Samsung is actually makes up about 14% of this ETF. And then you've got the rest of the, basically, um, in total about 35% is the top 10. Right, the next one I want to show you is the Invesco Dow Jones Islamic Global Developed Markets and it has expense ratio of 0 0.4. A year to date is up 20%, which is really good. And the top 10, obviously, is up 20% because look at the top 10. You've got Apple, you've got Microsoft. Let me just stop there. Some of you might be thinking, why on earth are these companies Shreya compliant, okay? Why are they here if they're not Sharia compliant? Because you've seen other places where like Meta and the Alphabet are not Sharia compliant and so on. Or they have a questionable whatever. Now the reason they, they basically this is okay is because an ETF is treated as like a one stock. And they just do the maths from there on. They don't look at individual companies and then whatever come up with. As long as these companies are not doing certain things like the alcohol, the gambling, the main things like pornography. All of these things take them out. If, for example, a company like uh, Amazon that has a main product is basically, for example, AWS and so and so, and then they have a section where they have a movies and so on, they look at that section and just uh, and include that as a part of the whole ETF. And if it's less than 5%, then that's basically the, what they're looking for. Okay, so they treat it as a one single stock rather than individually look as long as these companies do not sell the stuff that i just mentioned it should be okay i hope that kind of makes sense so you've got the nvidia's you've got the alphabet class a and class b and c and you've got your teslas you've got exxon and then you've got jnj so again the biggest companies in the united states are on this top 10 and it's about 30% or 29% overall so this is a decent etf it's slightly expense ratio slightly higher but it is actually really a good ETF. I've talked about this before in the channel, so go and find that. If you go to the ETF section on my channel, you'll find all the ETF stuff I've spoken about. Some of them need to be updated, inshallah, I will. Um, if you want to, by the way, if you want to look at it in more, in more, like more depth into any of these ETFs, let me know, inshallah, I'll prepare something for us, inshallah. And then just to show you the breakdown okay, of these companies that you just seen, you can see about 7% is Apple, another 6% Microsoft, and then it's about 3% Amazon, NVIDIA is only 2%, Apple basically about 2%, and then 1%, 2% kind of thing down as you go along. So it's actually not bad, about 7% is actually better than that 15% for Microsoft to 22% for Microsoft in when, we, when it comes to these two. Remember this was 22, this was 15 or whatever, and this was like, I can't remember what it was 12 or whatever it was so again it's well well distributed in terms of waiting so that's not a bad thing next one is the one that we know well enough okay that's halal etfs by wahid expense ratio of 0 0.5 total return basically year-to-date return of 23 percent so so far that's the highest that we've seen why again if you look at these two etfs they're very very similar so they go you got apples you got the microsoft you got the alphabet a and c you got teslas metaphor you've got meta not metaphor meta is actually up like 100 something percent and is nvidia here no actually no that's interesting so they don't have nvidia there but exxon is there j and j is there procter and gamble and chevron all of them that makes up about 50 percent so 50 percent of your remember you might this etf might have about at least to say 100 stocks okay or even more than that and 50 percent of that comes from the top 10 and a lot of these companies, ETFs are very similar in terms of that, okay? So highly concentrated in the top 10, but it doesn't matter because these companies do really well in, in generally. I mean, they do well. 2022, they didn't do well because of a lot of the technology companies didn't do well, but now they are doing well. So that's probably why 23% is it's up about 23% a year to date, right? So looking at this company um, in terms of breakdown, you can see 15% is actually Apple. Microsoft is about 13%. 
than 3%. So the highly concentrated in just the first two, but then again, the rest of them are well distributed, about 3%, 2%, 1%, and so on. And that's about 50 something percent, like I showed you already. So again, another decent ETF that you could potentially add to your portfolio. Now, I'm going to give you my opinion on what I think at the end of all the ETFs, the ones that I would personally buy if I were in your shoes or whatever. But just for now, let's finish the rest of them. So we've got three more to go. Oh, before I move on from this one, is it does actually have any um, dividends, okay? So this has a dividend yield of 0 0.06, so which is very similar to the S&P 500, if you think about it. Right, the next one is Umma. This one is actually newish. I think starting in 2022. I'll check that in a second. 0 0.65, a total basically year-to-date return of 9.8, just about 10%. And this one is really interesting because it has some of the biggest companies out there in different regions of the world, okay? So you've got you Taiwan. I'm not sure which where this company comes from, but you've got ASML, you've got Samsung again, um, you've got Shopify, you've got Shopify, I think is Canadians, that's probably why they added it there. Novo, Novatis, you've got Roche, for example, you've got Tencent, which is the company that owns, I think, the company that owns um Alibaba, I'm not sure. And then Nestle, for example, I think it's the um, French company. So you've got different companies that are like dominant in their own countries and regions and so on. And that's about 37%, which is quite basically nice in terms of distribution side of things. And let's have a look at in terms of um, like the percentage of these companies. So semi Taiwan Semi is actually about 5.2%. And then this company is 47 four percent four percent three percent so it's actually not bad at all in terms of how it's distributed and then you can see the breakdown for different countries and so on so that's the next one okay so again an interesting one the expense ratio is slightly high but it seems really interesting and the next one is one that we have seen before is the spus again expense ratio of 0 0.49 is about 0 0.5 a year to date is up 25 percent one let's call it 26 percent so so far that's the highest but again look at it you've got apple microsoft nvidia obviously alphabet class a tesla meta alphabet class c you got jnj merck and eli Lilly. this company is killing it right now i wish i bought it but it's too expensive it's been too expensive for a very long time just nvidia and all the others but 48 percent almost comes from the top 10. This is really a good ETF, but then again, the expense ratio is very high right now. And luckily, the companies that are doing really killing the market is actually in this ETF. Okay, so let me just quickly show you the breakdown. As you can see, Apple is about 12%, Microsoft is about 11%, Nvidia about 5%, Alphabet Class A is 3%, then 3%, 3%, 3%, 2, 2, 2, 1%, just Eli. Um, Lily. So again, a really good company and with good ETF. And you can see the sector breakdown. You can see technology is about 27, 24. 20. So you get very well diversified if you think about it. But the majority of it comes from the top two. Electronic technologies or communication, whatever. And then you've got your technology side of things. Okay. Oh, before I move on, it does also have a dividend yield of 0 0.98. And finally, we have SP. RE, which is a real estate, um, which is basically a real estate the REIT, basically. Okay, so this one it has expense ratio of zero point six nine a year to date because the real estate have not done anything this year, so they are down almost about one percent. And the companies from Prologis, Equinix, for example, which is the a data center company, so a company that sets up all the data centers, so like. If a company like NVIDIA needs a data center, this they go to this company, they buy the property, they set up everything for them, and then they just rent it from them. You, We've seen public storage, I own that company, your Crown Castle, and you got a few other companies that I haven't come across yet. This one I know, Av um, Avalon Bay, is actually quite a good one. I think it's still, it's still Sharia compliant, I'm not sure. And then 76% is actually this of it, this ETF is actually just the top 10. I don't think there's that many companies in this ETF. I think it's basically about 20 companies or so. So maybe that's why it's highly concentrated on just top 10. If we look at this website, you can see about 12% is Equinix, for example. Prologis is about 12%. Public storage is 12%, 11%. Again, 4%, 5%, let's call it 4, 5, 5%, and so on for the rest. And as you can see here, 
76% of the total is actually just comes from the top 10 and the rest is about 23%, okay? So there you have it. There's different, eight different basically ETFs. If you're starting a new portfolio and you're looking for a way of, you know, to just building a portfolio of just ETFs, there's eight different ETFs. I'm sure there's a few others out there that I haven't looked at yet. There's ones that call a man and so on. I haven't looked at that. Maybe I can look at that, inshallah, if you guys are interested. But there is, if you're starting a new portfolio and you want a 40% of your portfolio to be ETFs or whatever it is, if you haven't watched the video on the X stock side of things, do that because I've given you 15 companies you can start with. If you want to buy some of these companies, you don't have to own all 50 or 15 of them. You can have it two from each sector or each section and then you can own some of these ETFs. Now, this is not financial advice. I'm not saying go away and do this okay the only one i own this is this one i'll show you in a second so what would i've done if i was starting today what would i do i'll be honest with you if you don't know anything about stocks start with etfs it's probably better definitely not financial advice but i'm just giving you some ideas of what you could do please okay so don't lose your money because i said so okay things that so out of this what would i own i'll be honest with you i would own this okay because the expense ratio is quite low and the companies in here are very well established companies they are very similar the two i was going for this one because of the world whatever diversification but it doesn't look like it's that well diversified around glo around the globe so it's not really that um i wouldn't touch this um this is really interesting okay this is definitely one of my top um five you know i will actually have the investco dow jones over halal and, the re and obviously this one as well, SPUS. And the reason I say that is they are very similar, the three of them. The stocks in there are the Apples, the Microsofts, the NVIDIAs, and so on. The reason I would own this over the others is because this company is a, is a one of the biggest companies when it comes to ETFs and so on in the United States. It's very well known. They own a lot of ETFs, a lot of under asset under management and so on. In comparison to up and coming halal and spus i don't even know who owns this okay but these two actually are very new they had a problem with the basically the um they recently had some problem and i'm sure that's now fixed on okay but i would feel comfortable owning this over these two just in case so my favorite is the us version of this is this one as well okay and if you're into REITs and so on, maybe this one. But as you can see, if you were going for the dividends, I get it. But if you're going for total return or whatever, then there's right now they're not doing that well. And in terms of dividends for that ETF, right, it's actually 3.14. So that's not actually bad at all. But yeah, so those are my favorites. So this one I will definitely, this one I will definitely, but the rest of them I will be a bit careful. Um, but again, they are, the companies in there are very solid. Halal is really good. SPU is really good. But then my issue will be, and maybe I'll give you a few more years then look into it. But right now, this will probably be my favorite considering it is basically a company that's very well known. The expense ratio is way cheaper and I can get the same companies that I would get in, in, all, in the other two ETFs. I hope that is helpful. Okay, and if you find in any of this helpful, please share it with everybody that you know. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, I'm going to do the best I can to help the community. And all I need from you guys is to either join us on the Discord and so on, okay, and the Patreon account. Get basically a hold of this Sharia compliant investing ebook, as well as obviously all the other ET, um, trackers that I've actually uploaded. Have a wonderful day. Assalamu alaikum.